In this video, I want to show you how to analyze this op-amp circuit. Now, when you first look at this, and if you've never seen or haven't done many of these circuits before, this can look terribly intimidating. So a great place to start is to put in the ideal op-amp assumptions. So let's just do that. It'll make the circuit much nicer to deal with. So the ideal op-amp assumptions play out like this. So the currents into the op amp i minus and i plus are both zero. The voltage between the minus and plus terminals is zero, so we might say, well, VAB equals zero. And another way to say that is, well, VA equals VB. And that automatically helps us because we know by looking at this node here that VB is equal to VI, or the input voltage, so that means that VA equals VI. And normally people annotate this by putting maybe a dashed line here between A and B and, and signifying that this is a virtual short circuit. Okay, so VA and VB are the same. So this leads to more information that is useful to us. For example, if we did KCL here at node A, we would have the sum of all currents leaving B0 and I could also add the I minus. However, we know that I minus is zero, so we, we just ignore it. Now this leads then to something that we can immediately recognize, that I1 is equal to minus I2. And you can see that this way, right? If uh, I minus equals zero, well then I1 would have to be the same, but opposite in sign is I2, because I could draw IB, and you could imagine how well, sorry, let's call it IA. This IA flows down into this node, but it can't go right into the op amp, so all of it has to go to I1. So I1 has to be the same as IA. IA is the opposite of I2, so we have this re relationship I1 is negative I2. Now that we have that established, well, there are some things we can know here. Well, I1, right, if we can say, Using Ohm's law, you always take the tail node voltage minus the head node voltage, so it's VA minus zero over R1. And we know that VA is VI, so we'll put VI over R1. And then I2 then has to be negative VI over R1. Therefore, if we did Ohm's law, we would write I2 would be uh, VA, uh, and then minus VO over R2. That's one way to do it. Another way, another thing we could do then is say, well, okay, VO is equal to R2 I2 plus VA. And I just reworked that equation right there. That's all I did. I reworked the Ohm's Law equation. So now we know VA is VN or VI, so we'll put here VI, and then we already know I2, I2 should be negative VI over R1, that, and then we multiply by R2. Now we can write this as a V, and we can write it like this, so all I've done is I factored out the VI, and actually, I made a sign error, so uh, we're going to fix it. So uh, what I need is a negative sign here, I believe, because what I did was I kept the VA on this side, which is VI, and then uh, I pushed I2, R2 from this side to the other side, so that introduces the negative sign. And then uh, there's this negative sign, VI over R1, that's uh, I2, so that means I need to flip that sign. Okay, so that is correct now. And what I can see here then is that uh, VO is proportional to VI by this factor. Another thing we might like to do is have the gain. We call that A, and the gain is VO over VI. And... Uh, you can see here that if you divide both sides of this equation by vi, well then we have this parenthetical term, so it's 1 plus 
R2 over R1. And immediately we can say this has to be greater than zero because one is positive and then both resistances are positive. And we know it's also greater than one, even uh, stronger than just greater than zero, we'll say greater than one. So since it's greater than one, we say this is amplifying. If it were less than one, we would say uh, that's attenuating. Also, uh, it could be less than zero. Uh, well, let's say less than negative one. You know, maybe not this circuit, but another circuit, you could have a gain less than negative one. And so that would be inverting and amplifying. Because of the negative sign, that's the inverting. And then the absolute value greater than one, well, that's amplifying. And so it's a circuit like this that we often want to use in sensors because it boosts a weak signal. And the other thing I'll show you, and we didn't do it in this circuit, is that to get amplification, you actually have to supply external power. So we often have a power supply. Maybe there's a negative VCC and a plus VCC. But that's not shown in this circuit, and we're not going to deal with it. So uh, that's some pretty detailed analysis there. Uh, in summary, you want to start with your ideal op amp assumptions because uh, it just helps you know more about the circuit. And the more you know, the easier it becomes to analyze the circuit. And then we learned that uh, I1 in this case had to be the opposite of I2 because there were no other current carrying connections at node A. That was a pretty ad hoc solution. You could do this by nodal analysis and that might make it nicer and easier. So let me show you that really quick. So what I would want to do is analysis at node A because that's where all the interesting stuff is going on with the currents, right? So we already have this KCL equation I1 plus I2 plus I minus equals zero. Well, we ignore that. And then we do Kirchhoff's voltage law where I1 is VA minus zero over R1. And uh, I2 is VA minus VO over R2. And then we substitute in what we know. We know that VA is actually VI. And then we can rearrange this just like before. Basically, I'm going to push the, the VO over R2 to the other side. And I factor out the VI. And then the last thing I'll do is multiply everybody, both sides, by R2. And so you see, I have the same equation for VO down here as we did above up here. So it's good to see that with two approaches, we have the same answer. And then you could divide both sides by VI to get the gain. So with two approaches and one result, we should be confident that we can analyze this circuit.